Hi folks, here's another one from chapter 14. A 35 gram glass thermometer reads 21.6 degrees Celsius before it's placed in 135 milliliters of water. When the water and the thermometer come to thermal equilibrium, the thermometer reads 39.2 degrees Celsius. What was the original temperature of the water? Now this is a heat transfer problem um, and the big idea that we're going to use here is the heat that is going to be lost by the hot water it is going to be equivalent to the heat that is gained by the glass thermometer now every time you have a situation like this um, every object the glass thermometer and the water gets its own mc delta t for a quantity of heat so each one of these oops that should be a q each one of these is a q quantity of heat lost by the water equals the quantity of heat gained by the glass so let's start out by writing the generic equation and then we're going to fill in the pieces so this is going to be the mass of the i'm going to use a little double w for water h2o is what i prefer but it's a lot of space so mass of water specific heat of water change in temp water is going to be equivalent to mass of the glass thermometer specific heat of glass change in temperature of glass now when you do this um, one of the hints to doing these problems is set up your delta t's set up your changes in temperatures to make your change in temperatures positive you want a positive change in temp if you're going to set your problems up like this heat lost equals heat gained so take a look first off at the water the water starts out warm and it's da, 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 glass thermometer reads 21 it's put in water and it ends up at 39 so is the water going to gain or lose heat well it's actually going to lose heat it's going to start out warmer and it's going to end up colder so what that means is this is going to be the for the water this is going to be the original temperature is bigger minus the final temperature which will be a little smaller the glass thermometer is going to start out colder and that means its final temperature is bigger and its original temperature is smaller you got to take a moment and think these through but both sides the delta t how you set up those equations are going to look sometimes very very different so you have to think that through logically and look at the situation now what i'm going to do is I'm going to put the numbers into the equation I'm going to write it all out before I do that um, let me just say something when you do this you as the problem solver may choose if you are going to use energy units of calories or if you were and then mass in grams and this is the preferred way to do this if you are using if you are in chemistry because chemistry classes use similar problems or do similar problems um, what's the advantage to using calories well the advantage to using calories is the specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius that's handy it's a really handy constant the other thing you can choose is you can choose to use your energy units as joules and then you're going to have to use your mass in kilograms what's the advantage of that the advantage to that is that you are going to stay in the MKS system and many 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 physics students say for goodness sakes don't change units on me now because that's very confusing so I will do some problems in each technique um, pick one my, my, my big rule is pick one and don't change horses halfway through the race then you're going to get in deep deep trouble all right in this one I'm going to go with calories why because I just want to that's all okay so we're going to start with the water and I have 135 milliliters of water if you remember early in this class we said that 135 milliliters of water has a mass of 135 grams can you see that say that for every volume you cannot but pure water we can so here's what we've got I have got the mass of my water is hundred and thirty five grams of water specific heat of water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius and why am I choosing calories again 
it's simple because I'm in grams. I don't have to convert all those units. Change in temperature. What is my original temperature of the water? That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm after. The final equilibrium temperature of everything is 39.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is the heat lost by the water. Now, the heat gained by the glass is going to be the original mass of the glass, 35 grams. So I've got 35 grams of glass. The specific heat of glass, where the heck do I find the specific heat of glass? On the constants sheet. On that sheet of constants that you got early in the class. So specific heat of glass is 0.2 calories per gram degree Celsius. Um, and if it's not given on there or you ever look for a constant and it's not given, that's why the internet exists. So you can certainly use that as well. Change in temperature, final temperature is when it reaches equilibrium, 39.2 minus the original temperature of 21.6. Okay, this is kind of a big beast. It's just long, and we're now going to simplify it as much as we can. So grams are going to cancel. 135 times 1, so this is going to be 135 calories times TO minus 39.2 degrees Celsius is going to equal 35 grams are going to cancel. What is 35 times 0.2, well, I think it should be, let's double check so I don't say something silly, that's going to be 7, and keep those three sig figs, 7, and that's going to be calories, and that's going to be times 39.2 minus 21.6, so times 17.6 degrees Celsius, and this is calories per degree Celsius, per degree Celsius. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to just write one more layer down. On the right hand side, 7 times 17.6. This is going to be 123 calories will prevail. So that's going to be calories. And then on this side, 135 calories times original temp minus 39.2 degrees Celsius. I want to solve for TO. How do I now mathematically deal with this? Remember that distributive property, 135 times TO, 135 times that. So I'm going to have 135, oops, calories per degree Celsius. I forgot a unit. Boy, was I getting cavalier over here. Calories per degree Celsius times TO minus 135 times 39.2, 135 times 39.2. This is going to give me 52.92 calories. The degree Celsius here will cancel. Gives me 123 calories. I've got to get all my calories together, so I'm going to add 52.92 to both sides. When I do that, I end up with 135 calories per degree Celsius times original temp is going to be 5415 calories. To solve for original temperature, I am then going to divide both sides by 135 calories per degree Celsius. Calories will cancel, the degree Celsius in the sub-basement will come up top. And let's do a little division. And the final temperature I get is 40.1 degrees Celsius. Alrighty, there we go. Let's see if we can get one more of these. And let's try this one. An ice chest at a beach party contains 12 cans of soda at 5 degrees Celsius. Each can of soda has a mass of 0.35 kilograms and a specific heat capacity of 3,800 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Someone adds a 6.5 kilogram watermelon, gosh, doesn't watermelon sound good, at 27 degrees Celsius to the chest. If you assume that the specific heat of the watermelon is the same as the specific heat of water, what will the final equilibrium temperature of the soda and the watermelon mixture be and ignore any specific heat of the ice chest? So here's the big idea. The heat that is going to be lost 
by the, um, I'm going to say this differently, the heat that is going to be uh, gained by the watermelon is going to be equal to, is it gained? No, lost, lost, lost. How about trying this again, purpose? All right, the heat that is actually going to be lost by the watermelon, the watermelon's getting colder, so it will lose heat. Okay, the heat lost by the watermelon is going to be equal to the heat that will be gained by the soda pop. There we go. Now, if you recall, every time you have one of these on each side, they get their own unique MC delta t. So for our watermelon, what do we know? We're going to have the mass of the melon, the specific heat of the melon, and the change in temp of the melon. On the other side, we're going to have the mass of the sodi pop, the specific heat of the sodi pop. I'm sorry, I'm having fun saying that. And the change in temp of the soda pop. Remember, we want to keep these change of temps positive. So I'm going to make this change in temp for the melon 27 degrees. That's how it's how warm it starts out, minus T final. And I'm solving for T final. I want to know what's the final temperature of the mixture. For the soda pop, it's going to end up cold, uh, warmer. So the warmer temperature is going to be bigger, T final minus the original temperature, 5 degrees. So those are going to be slightly different. Um, we've got to do one more thing before we put our numbers in here, and that is we have to have the whole mass of the soda. We have 12 cans of soda. Each one has a mass of 0.35 kilograms. So let's figure out the, that's cans, cans. That looks like calories, doesn't it? 12 times 0.35 is 4.20 kilograms. That's going to be the mass of my soda. So I think I'm now ready to put my numbers in. What, mass of my watermelon. I have got a watermelon that weighs 6.50 kilograms. Specific heat of the watermelon, they said let's pretend it's the same as water. There's a reason it's called a watermelon. Joules per, pull this down, Joules per kilogram degree Celsius, 27 degrees minus T final, equals the heat that is going to be gained by the soda. Mass of my soda, I believe we got 4.20 kilograms. Specific heat of the soda pop, we're told, is 3,800. That must be also adjusting for the cans involved. Kilograms degrees Celsius times T final minus 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, next stop is we are going to simplify by combining those. So 6.5 times 4186, this is 27209 joules per degree Celsius times 27 degrees Celsius minus T final equals, and on the other side, 4.2 kilograms of soda pop times 3,800 is 15,960 kilograms are going to cancel joules per degree Celsius, T final minus 5 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to use that distributive property. This times this, this times that, this times this, that times that, so let's do that. I'm going to have uh, change pens here, 27,209 times 27. So on the left, I'm going to have 73,500 um, joules, okay, minus 27,209 joules per degree Celsius times T final equals 15,960 joules per degree Celsius times T final minus 15,960 times 5, 79,800 and degree Celsius are going to cancel and that's going to be joules. Now we combine like terms. So I'm going to put that T final on that side, and I am now going to put those joules on that side, and when they go to the other side, they change 
sine. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with 73500 joules plus 79800 joules equals 15960 joules per degree Celsius T final plus 27209 joules per degree Celsius T final. These problems are not mathematically hard. They're kind of like accounting. You have to keep track of all this detailed stuff. That's why I'm not an accountant. Okay, when I add the left-hand side together, 73500 plus 79800, I get a number that looks wrong. So I'm going to do that again, 735000 plus 79800. I get 814,800 joules, and on this side, 15,960 plus 27,290, I get 43,250 joules per degree Celsius times T final. Okay, how do I get T final alone? Divide both sides by 43,250. Woofta! All right, eight one four eight hundred divided by forty three to fifty, and I end up with a final equilibrium temperature of right around eighteen point eight degrees Celsius. How was that? Yeah, I know they're long, but that's the way they work. All right, see you later.